One of the most interesting, unusual, and ravishing concerts of the year took place April 23rd at Virginia Wesleyan's Hoffheimer Hall, when the Rose Ensemble presented From the Land of Three Fates. The renowned early music ensemble explored religious and secular music of Christian plain chant, the Sephardic Jewish tradition, and traditional Arabic and Bedouin songs. It was magic, pure, passionate, and utterly thrilling. Singing from memory throughout, they began with the Ladino, Judeo-Spanish song, Cuando el Rey Nimrod, a miracle tale of how an evil king's plan to slaughter the newborn Abraham was thwarted. Introduced by David Burke's oud, a lute-like Middle Eastern instrument, tenor Nicholas Chalmers and baritone Jonathan Ten Brink intoned the tale and were joined by Jenna Watson's viel, medieval violin, and by the women, sopranos Kim Sueoka, alto Linda Kackelmeyer, and soprano Nell Snedis. They transported the audience into an ancient time and culture with arrestingly unusual scale intervals, dazzlingly unusual vocal technique, and expressive musicianship. Their meticulous research provided the audience with excellent programs that included not only the texts and translations of the song, but a fascinating look at the history and cultures from which the unfamiliar music arose. Pues que tu reina de cielo was a viancico by Juan del Encina from the time of Queen Isabella. It extolled Mary as Queen of Heaven. The women began accompanied by percussionist Tim O'Keefe's hand drum and then adding the men's voices. Special guest soprano Nels Nidas, who specializes in Italian and Spanish Baroque and Sephardic music, has sung all over the world accompanied by oud and drums, using her heels as subtle percussion, her expressive eyes and subtle physical movements brought to life the traditional Sephardic song Una Matica de Ruda, a sprig of rue, in which a mother asks her daughter, who gave you this flower? The Rose Ensemble's founder, tenor Jordan Schrammick, and soprano Kim Suyoka began Por que llorash Blanca Niña, Why Do You Cry?, Fair Maiden, a blend of two Sephardic stories. Snedas, Chalmers, and Kackelmeyer were added to the mix with Schrammick's delicate psaltery, oud, viel, and medieval tambourine. In the humorous but no less exquisite Coplas de las Flores, each flower bragged about its ability to praise God. Repetitive harp arpeggios and variations accompanied the plain chant Chives Celeste Patrie from the Book of Revelation, in which the devastatingly beautiful voices of Suyoka and Snidas soared with breathtaking micro-ornamentation. An anonymous 14th century English instrumental featured Jenna Watson's harp. Suyoka's voice floated gracefully in Hannah's Seven Songs, a Sephardic Hanukkah song. Ten Brink intoned a traditional Sephardic psalm from Istanbul, joined by Shramik and Chalmers. Their unison in the micro-ornamentation was mind-boggling. I asked him how he did it. He said, drill, drill, drill. Another liturgical song pleaded insistently for God to answer us, answer us. How could God resist such music? Dotted triple rhythms, brightened a Mardi Gras song, then two cheerful Sephardic songs recounted Hanukkah recipes. Well, what's a celebration without feasting? The 13th century Spanish Cantiga, number 424, was a ravishing song about the three kings who came to Bethlehem with gifts. A Hispano-Arabic muwashasha, traditional Arabic poetry set to music, had Suyoka's pure tone and precisely controlled vibrato. David Burke closed his eyes and grooved in the Turkish instrumental, cranking his oud into faster and faster rhythms. I hadn't seen anything like this since the Silk Road folks. Tim O'Keefe's drum riffs and counter rhythms, especially in long 9-8 section oddly subdivided, were simply amazing. Harp, frame drum with a rain stick sound and oud accompanied Morena Meyaman, sung high and clear by Snedas, who acted out its story with wit and sly humor. 
The program notes that the music and poetry of two traditional Bedouin instrumentals probably contain the most archaic surviving features of Near Eastern folk music. In a dramatic paraliturgical poem, Et Share Ratzon, the cantor's voice imitates the sound of the shofar. It's difficult to describe, but riveting to hear. For the final selection, a Balkan Sephardic song about Abraham's being saved from King Nimrod, the ensemble invited the audience to sing along on the refrain, and they did, and got it mostly right by the fifth or sixth repetition. Shramik noted in his last remarks, you have azaleas and all kinds of things blooming. We're from Minnesota. The Rose Ensemble sings sacred and secular music spanning a thousand years, from Slavic liturgical music to early American hymns to traditional Hawaiian vocal music to the Mexican Baroque to this program of Sephardic, Christian, and Arabic origins. Astonishingly, with superb vocal productions stylistically unique to each genre, the research that informs their singing is meticulous, but the effect is worth all the effort. From the other side of the footlights, I'm M.D. Ridge.